Hey everybody, Amy with AJ's Vintage Designs and Fashion Toppings here. You might have just watched my thrift haul. It's the video right before this in the video feed, and there'll be a link to it at the end of this video as well. But I did thrift haul, got some jewelry boxes, got some other home decor items, but this is the redo of one of those jewelry boxes. Now, I only paid $6.99 for this, and look at how beautiful she is now. Hold the drawers. Isn't that beautiful? See the blending? Now, this video is going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial from base coating to blending to applying a transfer and sealing. It's all in here. Now, before you start watching, make sure you hit that subscribe and that like button and also that little bell so that you're notified each and every time I put up a new video. So let's go ahead and get, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Now, the one thing I didn't get on the video is cleaning. No one wants to see me cleaning. So I actually cleaned the piece before I began with a TSP-based cleaner called White Lightning from Dixie Bell, and then I gave it a good rinse. And so where we're, where we're starting at in this tutorial is the base go to French linen so let's go ahead and get started okay so let's go ahead and I'm gonna get my French linen on here I'm gonna go around these edges Okay, so I have my first, first coat of French linen on, and basically, like I said, this is just the first coat. We're gonna be blending on the second coat. I just needed to have a coat of paint down, and I needed to fully dry so that when I do my second coat and my blending, it'll all come together much, uh, much easier, because if you don't let this first coat dry long enough, then when you add water when you're blending, you could reactivate your first coat of paint. So I'm gonna let this dry several hours, and then we're gonna go ahead and start doing the blending um, and bring this all together. But as you can see, all my drawer tops look nice and neat. All you need to do is keep that baby wipe handy, take your finger and wipe that paint off. I also um, did the inside, so it's all nice and clean and neat. And I don't have to worry about everything drying shut on me because there's paint in between. Okay, so my first coat is dry. And that's all, I still have a little bit of paint left over. That's all I use for that first coat. So now I'm gonna be using the French linen once again. Very little. I mean, these projects like this cost very little in paint. You can use your leftover paint that you have sitting around. Look at how little I have left, or little I have to use. Okay, so I got my brushes ready. Got my sawmill gravy. And once again, I'm just gonna work out of the lid. That's all I'm gonna need. Okay, got a missing bottle of water. And let's start blending. Now for this, I'm gonna be putting the French linen around the outside, uh, more towards the outside, and I'll have that lighter color in the center. And then I have a little bit of my chocolate, which I'm gonna be putting around the edges. And I, once again, shake it up. I'll just use what's in the lid. It's all I'm gonna need. Very little paint. Okay, let's get started. Okay, let's start off with getting my French linen around the outside. I'm gonna mist it just slightly with a little bit of water. It's gonna help my paint go farther. Getting around all these edges. Okay, making like a little box. And now I'm gonna go ahead, keep that brush separate, use a new brush, and I'm going to be doing um, the sawmill gravy in the center. You can see how much lighter that is. It's just gonna give that little bit of glow so it's not one solid piece or one color. These colors blend out very easy together. So now that I've got my sawmill gravy on there, I need to blend it. So now I'm going to just go over in different directions, making those colors kind of spread out together very gentle see how they're starting to come together now see that strip that long hard line right there you can take your brush break up that line a little bit in different directions making little x's see how it's breaking that line up a little bit i don't want it to be a solid straight line so i'm breaking it up a little bit just like that and now i'm going to go over you can use whichever brush you want i'm going to go over with Another brush and get rid of those little streak marks. Okay. 
being very gentle, okay? So I just want it to look a little cloudy on the middle. Now, if I, if I want more, I want it to be more obvious, then I'm gonna add a little bit more of that sawmill gravy in there. Okay, you can do it in circles so you get that cloudy look. See, I'm doing it in like a circular motion. That gives it more of a cloudy appearance all the way out to those edges. Let's mix in that sawmill gravy and French linen together. And I've got like a cloudy effect to it. Okay, now you can wipe your paper towel off or you can wipe your brush off in a paper towel. Get that paint off there. And you can then get rid of those swirl marks if you want and lightly just go over that. So that you have your brush strokes going in the same direction. What that has done is, see how it's not one solid color? It's got a little bit of cloudiness of light colors in it. It's very subtle, but it keeps, me, it, keeps it from looking like a one solid color painted piece. Okay, now I'm gonna come in with a little craft brush and I'm gonna be dipping into my chocolate. And see that chocolate, I'm gonna use very little chocolate. And I'm gonna come around these edges and I'm gonna be blending some of that chocolate in here. I'm just getting it on with the craft brush right now and I'm gonna spread it out with a regular brush. I'm gonna go around all these edges with a little bit of chocolate, very little on my brush. I'm gonna be adding some water on here, a little bit of mist of water here in a second to help it blend out. Going around all my edges and I'll be blending the fronts here next. So I'm not too concerned about this front lip but to make it easier on myself, I'm just gonna get it on there anyway. Okay, that looks messy in the front, don't worry about it, we're doing the front next. Okay, add a little bit more chocolate on here. Okay, so there I got it all the way around the borders. Now I'm gonna take a clean brush, clean brush, and I can mist it with a little bit of water, or I can mist my, I can either mist my piece with water, or I can mist my brush. I'm gonna mist my brush just a little bit. And now I'm just gonna go around those edges kind of blur out the line so they looked looks more like a little smoky edge see how that's blending out if you feel your paintbrush start to pull or tug either spray your brush or spray the piece that helps you have a smooth finish if you get too much paint on your brush get a paper towel out wipe it off and just go along those edges okay so I'm kind of Smoked out those edges. Now I'm gonna do this front lip here, keeping my brushes with the paint that they belong to. This is my French linen. Okay, I'm gonna come around and get all these sides with the French linen. Make sure you spray your brush. <clears throat> Mist your brush with just a little bit of water if you find that your paint is not moving as easily. Just a little bit of water. Dampen that brush up, okay. So you wanna work with a, a wet coat of paint. I'm gonna clean it up, don't worry. We're getting this paint on here. Now, got that wet coat of French linen on there. Go back to my sawmill gravy, which is the lighter color. And when I'm using paint, look at, that's, a, that's all I'm using. Okay, and I'm gonna put just a little bit of highlight in the center. Okay, see how that's highlighting it just a little bit? Dab, when I'm dabbing, I'm putting very little paint in my brush. I just want that French, uh, that sawmill gravy just to be in this little center wave here. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. Let's work down onto these drawers, okay. Bring in that paint from each side because we need to work with wet paint to be able to blend. Okay, bring it in. I can go all the way across if I want to, because I'm gonna bring that sawmill gravy in there anyway. Okay. So I got that on. Now I'm gonna go back to my, I keep my brushes separate. Back to my sawmill gravy once again. Very little. And I'm gonna go right across the center. 
See that little streak I'm putting in there? That is gonna give the illusion that light is bouncing off your piece, right in the center. See how that leaves a little bit of a highlight? And I'll blend these out just a little bit better. See in the camera that I do have. Some, I'm, I, I will come back with that chocolate. But see the highlighting on that drawer? Makes it look like there's light hitting it, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and do this drawer now, uh, that lip right here, I'm gonna come back with my chocolate. And I'm gonna mist my brush with a little bit of water. Okay, and I'm gonna come in and just get that groove with the chocolate. I wanna do it now while my paint is still wet, so it's blendable. Okay, there we go. And I'm gonna come back with my dry brush and kind of work my dry brush. The dry brush is what's gonna help you with the blending. So I'm just gonna drag that dry brush right over those colors, helping feather them out. See how it's feathering them out? And I can see in the camera, I need to feather the center out. And if it doesn't feather out for you, go in a different direction and then clean it up. Okay. I brought it down, I think, a little bit too far. So I'm gonna come back in. Didn't redip my brush. Take a little bit more of that sawmill gravy, that lighter color that I'm using as a highlight. I'm gonna bring it up to blend in that with that chocolate just a little bit more. I'm gonna keep going down to the next drawer. Now you can take your drawers out if you wish. I like to leave my drawers in so I can see how the drawers are gonna work together. Um, so like I said, you can take your drawers out but I prefer to leave them in so I can see what they're gonna look like all as one. Back to my French linen, my darker color. Getting that coat of French linen on there. Don't be afraid of blending. It's just a matter of using very little paint. You see how much, I, I'm barely putting any paint on my brush, just enough to get a coverage. And I already have my base coat on, so the coverage is actually very easy to get. I'm highlighting those centers. Just looks like the light is bouncing off. The hardware does make it a little bit more difficult, but I'm getting that little bit of highlight in the centers, okay? I can bring it out farther if I want to. My hardware is in my way, but I can bring it out just a little bit more if I want to. I think I'm gonna do that. I have not redipped. I'm still using those little dots I had on my brush to start off with. Okay, see how you can see those slight colors? And if I need to, I can always go back and take my dry brush and really kind of pull those colors together. The dry brush kind of acts like an airbrush. It helps airbrush those lines out. Okay, that's the dry brush. It has no paint on it, okay? And I will come back up here and I want to lighten this chocolate. So by lightening the chocolate, see this little halo around here? Um, what I'm gonna do is mist the top with a little bit of water to reactivate it. And I'm using my French linen brush and I'm just gonna gently go over those borders where that chocolate might've been just a little bit too strong. And I'm just lightening it up. Okay, so there, I settled down that chocolate that's going around the top. If I decide I went too much with it, I just don't redip my brush. And that little bit of residual that's left on my brush, I can come back in on the corners and add some more of that chocolate back in there if I went too light with it. In the mirror, or looking in the camera to see if I like it the way it's going. Okay, there we go. I like this corner over here. This is I like this corner here, so I'm going to try to get this one to match it. Okay, there. That's much lighter. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do is I can either add some chocolate 
dab it up, put a little bit on my brush, and then I just push it off on a plate. I can come in from my edges here if I want to with a little bit of that chocolate just to make it look like a shadow. See this side to this side, I can just bring in a little bit of that chocolate. I'm using colors that are very similar, just a few shades off from each other. It makes life just a little bit easier because they blend so nicely. And if you're new to blending, picking colors that are close on the color wheel or just a few shades off from each other is a good way to practice your blending. Okay, so now I got those colors on there. Take my little dry brush and I'm gonna airbrush all those little edges so I don't, don't have, have a strong line. See how I'm doing this? Just taking my little dry brush and blurring out the start and stop of a certain color. So it's very subtle. See how here I got shading and here I don't. Just a little bit of chocolate. And I'm gonna be adding transfers on here. So I am not gonna go overboard with all the shading because I don't want it to compete with my, um, with my transfer, okay? So dip a little bit more in here. Okay, so see how easy it was to shade? Hold that like this. Just that little bit of chocolate there just gives a little bit of shadow. Where on this side, I have nothing. This side, I have a little bit. Very, very subtle. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue to paint the back and the sides in the same fashion, and we'll come back and we'll be applying the transfer next. Okay, now I'm gonna, I'm using one of my scraps from my transfer, and this is one that actually fits on here perfect. And I had used the cotton ones before, so I'm gonna use this leftover piece. It actually fits right in the center perfectly. So what I wanna do is I'm going to position the transfer so it's nice and centered and looks somewhat straight. That looks good right there. Press it down. Okay, now that I got that transfer where I want it, what I'm gonna be doing is using the burnishing stick that comes with it. I'm going to rub on the image and then use my finger on the back side of the plastic to help it release. You're gonna keep going. If you have an area that doesn't release, lay the paper back down and press some more. But it's really quick and easy. Okay, make sure you take your finger, a cloth, a burnishing pad or something and make sure you give it one last burnishing uh, before you're done. You wanna make sure you have all those air pockets and bubbles, you see how I'm doing that with my finger. Um, you wanna make sure that it's well adhered and you have no air pockets or bubbles in your transfer. Okay, now my next step is to seal down these transfers. I did not seal my paint before I added the transfers. I seal it afterwards. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get my clear coat and satin. That's what I prefer as far as a sealer with this. I don't put gator hide on my transfers. Uh, if I wanna use gator hide, which if you don't know what gator hide is, it's Dixie Bell's water repellent clear coat. Um, I will put uh, one to two coats of satin down first, and then if I need for any reason to have that water repellent top coat, then I will put it over those other uh, clear coats. But um, you can use clear coat and flat satin or gloss on your transfers. Um, I'm gonna be using satin, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I'm using Dixie Bell's clear coat and satin, and I'm gonna use a synthetic brush. You can use a sponge, you can use whatever you want. Uh, just, I don't prefer, I prefer not to use a natural bristle brush with any of my clear coats. Okay, and that's all we do is seal it down.
Okay, so I have her all sealed. See that satin sheen? I put the hardware back on. I didn't change the, the color of the hardware because of the fact this has a key and I didn't want to have to paint the key and then have it mess up the mechanism as far as putting the key in there and having it work. So I did leave the, the hardware gold. I put that back on, but didn't she turn out cute? Got the cotton on the front, on each side, and then on the front top. Isn't that pretty? And you can see that how that chocolate around the edges just gives it that little bit of shading. Quick and easy project. Now, this piece started off at $6.99. I used maybe a couple tablespoons of paint is all it needed for this piece. And um, I left, I used leftover transfers from another project that I was working on. So always save your scraps because if you have little bits like this is just two little um, leftover pieces of a larger plant. Um, I cut those two off because I had already picked and choose little pieces of it for another project. Um, so use leftover transfers, uh, very little paint, and I think she turned out cute. Now something like this, I could turn around and list for $59.99 uh, easily within my booth and be able to sell it because she's nice and clean and she looks practically brand new. So for $6.99, and I could turn around and flip it for $59.99 easily, um, it's a pretty quick and easy profit. So there you go. I'm gonna take some pictures. I'm gonna stage this and put it at the end. Now make sure that you like and subscribe down below and click on that little bell. That way you're notified every time I put up a new video. Um, I'm gonna be doing a lot of trash to treasures as well as my furniture, maybe some canvas painting coming up as well. So a little bit of everything. So make sure you click on subscribe and click on that little bell. Okay, well, I'm Amy with AJ's Vintage Designs and Fashion Toppings once again, and I hope you have a great day.